Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today's matchup features a couple of big targets who will be looking to get open in the middle of the field. It's the Colts going up against the Seahawks. What a surprise here. There is rain in Seattle as we're off to CenturyLink Field to link up with our broadcast team of Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, no trip to the Northwest is really complete without a little rain, and we're going to get plenty of it here at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the Indianapolis Colts. Hello again, everybody. I'm Brandon Gordon here in the booth with, as always, Charles Davis. Charles, a lot of times in the open, we focus on quarterbacks, running backs. What about the tight ends in this one? Well, I think LR identified it really well because the tight ends are matchup nightmares nowadays. Who are you going to cover them with? Because really, they are pumped up wide receivers who can flat out run and use their body to create bigger plays. Cover them with a linebacker, cover them with a defensive back. Either way, they feel like they have the advantage. Set to go now on a wet and rainy night. And off we go from Seattle. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks take the field. They, they're one and one. They did beat San Francisco, but they've had trouble scoring just one touchdown in two games. What do you make of the offense there so far? I think it all comes back to the offensive line again. They've been trying to get that right for the last couple of seasons. Lost some people in preseason, still retooling, trying to come together as a coordinated group so that they can run the ball a little bit more, although the rookie Chris Carson is playing pretty well there. But they've got to pass protect and give Russell Wilson more time to get the ball downfield. Now a play fake here on first down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards on the play, and it'll make it a second down. And the big guy catches the ball in the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. Carry for Thomas Rawls. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. on first down. Complete. Richardson has it. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They call it a gain of 19 and it moves the chains. to Rawls. Now it's Wilson. He's going to let this one go deep. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. And here's the starting offensive unit for Seattle. In music, the Seattle sound is distinctive. In the NFL, it's the Seattle running game. Usually ranked in the top five in the NFL. It fell to number 25 in 2016 and they're trying to revamp the offensive line and find a bell cow running back in order to get things moving again. Here we go. 
second down here after the incomplete pass. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. And let's go through the starting defense for Indianapolis. When you look back at the 2016 season on defense for the Indianapolis Colts, when you look at the raw numbers, you're not impressed. 30th overall in total defense. So what they're trying to improve upon is playmakers. They've got to have some guys who can offset those types of numbers with making big plays and taking the ball away from the opposition. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away. Back deep for the Colts is Quan Bray. This is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. The Indianapolis Colts led on offense by Jacoby Brissett. Week two in the NFL made his second start in the league. And remember, he beat the Bills as a rookie with the Pats last year. He had his moments in this game, but ultimately the Colts fell in overtime. It felt almost like a desperate move, didn't it? Because Scott Tolzien has been with the team for a while, knows the playbook in and out. Bad first game, but I thought they'd come back with him and give him a second opportunity. But Jacoby Brissett's athleticism, I think, won the day because Arizona Cardinals defense, they swarm you, and they want to have someone who can move in and out of the pocket. Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. We keep talking about the impact that hybrid players have had on the NFL, those guys who can do multiple things. I think Cam Chancellor fits that perfectly. Is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? No, he's a football player. <laughs> and they love him in Seattle. He's been there ever since he came in the league in 2010. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. Let's go. Brad, 98. Brad, 98. Another carry now for Gore. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down in the backfield. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Here we go. One, nine. One, nine. Play fake, Brissett. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Led the NFL with 1,448 yards in 2016. The first Colt to do so since Reggie Wayne in 2007. How about this guy? He's been something. Yeah, four straight years now over 1,000 and three straight Pro Bowls for T.Y. Hill. Yeah, what I love about him, inside, outside, he can work it all. So here we go, first and 10 now. Gore. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. 
Brissett on first down. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And that one results in 35 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time, that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. here on first down. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And down inside the 15 he goes. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. And here comes play number six on this drive. Here we go. Five, nine. Five, nine. On first down, it's score. And power running here down to the six-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. But that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. It's Gore diving for the end zone, and the ball's knocked out, and the Seahawks have picked it up. Pardon me, you know how often we hear about the red zone, right? From the 20-yard line going in, that scoring zone, getting points on the board. A lot of teams call from the 10-yard line in the green zone. That's your money zone. He fumbles the ball inside the money zone. You have one job, take care of the ball. That didn't happen. So Seattle set to get the ball here on offense. Uh, let's discuss the running back situation. Eddie Lacy didn't even dress in week two. Chris Carson, the rookie out of Oklahoma State, he's kind of stolen the show there, hasn't he? Yeah, they got on him late in the draft process. Pete Carroll saw him on tape, really liked him. They took him in the seventh round. Don't forget Thomas Rawls. Mm -hmm. Had that terrific season a couple of years ago. Been battling injuries since then, coming back from an ankle injury. He only had, what, four yards in the last yeah, ball just game? five carries. Yeah, so, you know, Chris Carson now carrying the load for Seattle at present time. We'll see what they do moving forward. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They stay on the ground. Rolls again. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now it's Wilson. He'll set up the screen to Lacey. 
And he will get the first down as he's up to the 20-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Well, the offense lining up first and ten. Wilson again to Rawls. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Back to the ground on first. Again, it's Rawls. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. In today's NFL, you hear all the time about stretching the field and creating space in order to run plays. A toss play will help accomplish that because now you're pushing a defense to chase you all the way to the edges and to the sideline. That's a nice run probing now early to try and get things done later. Now Wilson on second down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. From the gun, it's Wilson. Let's this one rip toward Graham. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So instead of fourth down, first down. Well, so much for winning the down, you put a lot of emphasis on because third down is key for offense and defense. Instead, you're going to stay on the field and start a new set of downs. And here comes play number six on this drive. On first down, Wilson. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. You got to give some credit there. Able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Second and ten now, Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. They'll wind up getting ten back as that sets him up for third down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. They run with a power back, Rawls. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. 
Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Now it's Wilson. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. A great effort there from 13 yards out. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Blair Walsh on to attempt the extra point. Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. Walsh now to kick this one off. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll make it a second down. Frank Gore, the ageless one, over 1,000 yards last year. He's the first running back age 33 or older to top 1,000 since John Riggins way back in 83. So what he's done is he's made the case for running backs who are approaching 30 that there is life on the other side of that number because many think once you hit 30, you're going to decline. play the clock hits triple zeros and time is up on the first quarter seven nothing is our score we'll be back to seattle right after this the nfl on ea sports is fueled by gatorade the sports fuel company Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. Let's go. 
They run. It's Gore. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. K.J. Wright just keeps getting better at outside linebacker. Long, lengthy guy, can rush the passer, can drop into coverage. Has great agility, though, to stay on his feet and make tackles, too. And still has years ahead of him. Turned 27 in July, native of Olive Branch, Mississippi. On third down, Brissett. Now he'll let it go deep, right side. Oh, wide open, complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helm and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. He's fumbled already once, Charles. I'm not going to say that that was in his mind there, but I'm sure that during some of these plays, he is mindful of it. And once you fumble the ball, you know what your team tells you and your coaching staff? Take care of it. Rest of the game. And it does get in your mind a little bit, and sometimes that slows down your effort in trying to get free from tackles. And the defenders know it, too. They sniff that out, don't they? Everybody wants to swarm the football. You know the rule is, first guy hold up the runner, everyone else try and get there and strip the ball free. It'll be a gain of seven, and they get it back to a third and three. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. Come on, let's go! One, nine, one. Off the play fake, here's Brissett. And incomplete on the deep ball. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. And Adam Vinatieri still going strong at the age of 44. The oldest player in the NFL entered the league in 1996. And to put that into perspective, his age, you know who was born in December of 95? This year's number one overall pick, Miles Garrett. How about that? And Adam Vinatieri still making big kicks all along the way. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn it into a play action, and throw one deep. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And Graham's got it over the middle. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
Jimmy Graham had a really tough injury in 2015 that ended his season, but what a bounce back in 2016. How did he not get any votes for comeback player of the year? I was just going to ask you that. Not that Jordy Nelson wasn't deserving, but 65 catches, 923 yards. That was the highest total by a tight end in Seahawk history. And I think there's a chance that both of those numbers will increase in 2017. On second down, Rawls. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. The Seahawks on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and four. Here's Wilson. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. and 10 it's Wilson and this one caught along the sideline but they say already out of bounds and the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it up field and that brings up second down that one didn't quite make it to the target but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback is it sometimes there's just too much pressure there in any case the ball doesn't arrive Up. He's going to keep it. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Well, anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Off the fake to Lacey, here's Wilson. He's going to float this one deep right side. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage. Especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight. You just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. Here's John Ryan now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now a high kick here as he'll try to hang it up there. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. come back out for offense and you know they're 0 2 now for the third straight season Charles it's a franchise that had so much success in recent memory now with Andrew Luck struggling the last couple years with injuries a lot of trouble right now in the Circle City one thing we do know or we should know is that despite the fact that they're 0 2 they've been a team that's battled under head coach Chuck Pagano mm -hmm. remember he beat cancer mm -hmm. early in his tenure as a head coach came back led his team to playoffs the whole deal so being 0-2 will not phase the guy they call Chuck Strong, and he's going to continue to search for answers to get them going. On first and 10, Brissett going for the deep ball. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. 
Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Now on second down, this is Gore. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold them. as this one gets them to the 10-yard line. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down to throw Brissett, and that is incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. The Colts send out their punter as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Seven yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. And out now come the Seahawks. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. down with Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give him a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. going to give the Rawls and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Four yards on the pickup and that'll make it third and one. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Here's Wilson to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's John Ryan now, as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. 
And the Colts getting ready to go. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Start on the ground with Gore. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Stick to the ground game with Gore. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. From the gun, here's Brissett. He sets to fire deep. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. They didn't have a ton of yards to pick up on that third down, but there was no way they were playing that one safe. They decided to take that one downtown. They must have felt that they had a big play that was waiting for them. Unfortunately, it was incomplete. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. Now a fair catch taken, maybe a yard or two shy of midfield. That'll go down as just a 20-yard punt. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. Thomas Rawls getting ready to go here on offense. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who have been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football. And they've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. Attempt carry for Thomas Rawls. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. On second down, here's Wilson. And he's got his tight end. This is Luke Wilson. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Luke Wilson, 47 yards. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. When we draw up defenses on the board, we do account for every receiver. But on that particular play, somehow he was wide open, became an easy touchdown pass. Point try now for Walsh. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two.
Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And we take some time to spotlight T.Y. Hilton now. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts, one of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so that can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Second down, Brissett. A dump off here for Gore. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and that'll lead here to a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. The Colts on third down, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. And yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Century Link Field after this. A reminder coming up at halftime. Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Let's go! Ryan, 38! From the shotgun, it's Brissett. And pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down, Brissett again. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little game. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Now Brissett. And he's got his man, Hilton. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Here's Brissett. Over the middle, complete. It's Doyle. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. That one goes for 36 yards. We always look for breakout seasons, and Jack Doyle had one in 2016. 59 catches. What? He didn't even have that in the previous three seasons. No, previous three, 35 combined. But he was stuck behind Kobe Fleener for a while. He went to New Orleans, really opened things up, didn't it? Yeah, and Dwayne Allen's been shipped off to New England, so Jack Doyle, truly tight end one. Let's go! One, nine! One, nine! 
from the red zone now. Brissett. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Brandon Williams from 17 yards out. And the Colts able to get this back with it. A touchdown. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14-10. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. On the return, the All-Pro two years ago, Tyler Lockett. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first-half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. on first down drops it underneath for Rawls and he'll go out of bounds it looks like right at the 40 a gain of four on the play and it'll be second down I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays completed pass play now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground Now Wilson on second down. And left side here, it's Graham. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call. As the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This time they face a third and two. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player? Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. On is the punter, Ryan, to send this one away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Now, 
comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. But a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way, and they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field, try to make sure his teammates come along with him, and he feels like, if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, a little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. Here's Gore. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we send you cross-country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando. With our halftime report, here's Larry Ridley. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Seahawks are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Colts won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Offense out now after the fumble. Pass coverage will break down here. And 13 yards later, he'll go in for the score. As they get out to a 7-0 lead. Now second and eight. Wilson's by himself here. And he's gone as he sprints into the end zone. The Seahawks go up by 11. Colts have it at the 17. Brissett's going to complete the pass, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. Colts trail now by four. So that's it for us at the EA Sports Studio. We'll go back now to Seattle for the start of the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. The third quarter starts with a run by Gore. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, they run. Again, it's Gore. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. Play fake here on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Doyle. 
And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. expression it's not my night it hasn't been his so far I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage but it's been a tough go for him and every time he looks up somebody's there defensively that was the same case on that play now the former Seahawk this is Robert Turbin and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Set from the gun on third. A dump down to Turbin. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Now goal. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Let's go! One, nine, on the handoff, it's Gore. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Let's go. Out of the gun, Brissett. Open space inside the 10. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Now the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You're running against a half of him. And the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. Let's go! One, two, and it's first and goal now, but still 10 yards to go. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the five yard line. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yes, now second and goal. The end zone beckons, it looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook, run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Here we go. 
And this carry number 20 for Frank Gore. And he stopped immediately there. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, yeah, is it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. They go play action with Brissett. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cliff Averill with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. This a 33-yard attempt. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through. And that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. They go again with Rawls. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. He lost four there, and it's third down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. And the Seahawks on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and 14. From the shotgun, Wilson. And able to find Graham, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They go play action here on first down. 
And avoids the contact by sliding. It's a four-yard pickup, and it's a second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. On second down, Wilson. Out to the right here to Wilson. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. One Wilson to another for a Seahawk first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Fake to Rawls, Wilson. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. So the offense has it first and 10. Back to the ground attack. It's Rawls. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Second down following the run. From the gun, it's Wilson. This will be caught just inside the 10. And here he'll get it down to the 7. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. At some point, the doubters have to just kind of back off with Doug Baldwin, don't they? I mean, we're talking about back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Had over 90 catches in 2016. He's going to play with a chip on his shoulder, but he's going to be productive. 2016, also his first Pro Bowl as well. They snap it at one. Now Wilson, and that is incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. able to convert it as his kick is good and that'll move their lead up to four now so it's only three points on this opening drive of the third quarter and even though that stretches out the lead charles i think you'd have to consider this a win for the defense no couldn't agree more brandon that offense got themselves in prime position to really open up this ball game but the drive stalled out and yeah three points is very easy to get back in today's nfl After the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't. Not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. That's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control 
and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Now a handoff for Gore. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Throwing, Brissett. Throw left side is complete to Rodgers. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So it's a quarter that saw these two teams trade field goals here as we've reached the end of three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. Second down now after the pass completion. From the gun, here's Brissett. Over the middle complete, it's Doyle. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Set to throw on first. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. That'll bring up second down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They'll throw again, Brissett. And his throw here is incomplete. Kamar Aiken, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. The Colts on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and ten. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. 30, the 20, 10, and he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. Walsh now for the PAT. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. 
The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. First down, Brissett. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. So that'll back him up five. Second down, Brissett. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Brissett got his man complete over the middle. That's Doyle. And he'll get it down here to the 43. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Brissett again toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. The Colts on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and four. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five.
The Colts on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and nine. Again, it's Brissett. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first. But at least it's fourth down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. The Colts send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. It's a high kick and hit pretty well. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They start on the ground with Rawls. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. But Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. On second down, here's Wilson. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Henry Anderson in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, there was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. From the gun, Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here first and ten. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Here we go. A first down throw for Brissett. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time. And that'll bring up second down. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, that's really way down on the list.
accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Let's go! Point nine. Point nine. On second down, Brissett again. Over the middle, complete. It's Doyle. That catch good for five. It's third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Colts on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and five. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. And this is going to be incomplete. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. First down, this is Rawls. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And the Seahawks on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Again, Rawls. He's been busy tonight. And a loose football. Rawls loses it. And the Colts pick it up. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Partner, that would look like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here. Not done in the fourth. And our focus now shifts to Frank Gore. And as the numbers show, he really wasn't in the mix at the beginning, but they've got him in the rotation now, and it's proved a good move. And that's what happens when you're a good player. There's a lot more attention drawn to you, and it's obvious that they had him in their game plan on defense, not letting him get off to a good start, but he's found a way so far here in the second half. And a great spot to start this drive from here. We're set on first down. Drops it underneath to Gore. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Give him nine on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard. They need a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. Here we go! One, nine. 
A second down throw for Brissett. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. K.J. Wright coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. So a third and nine, and six defensive backs out there in the dive. Patrolling the passing lanes. Here's Brissett. Well, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Terry now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It will be a 51-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked. He's got daylight. He's at the 40. Pass the 20. 10. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. We talk about it a lot. One of the dangers of the long field goal, you got to kind of hit it low and drive it. That makes it susceptible to a block here. Not only do they block it, they return it. And how about how well they did on the return, but they didn't create a penalty. Oftentimes in that type of a scrambling situation, someone will clip, someone will block below the waist, right? It, you name it. In this case, though, that didn't happen. They formed it up, and he took it all the way back for a touchdown. Extra point try now for Walsh. And the lead is up to 18 now. So we have the touchdown now. Here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Complete. 
So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Here we go. Out of the gun, Brissett. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost them 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. To throw is Brissett. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Let's see what the offense comes with here. Second and eight. to throw Brissett. And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Cliff Averill in there to get him for his second sack of the night. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. And the O-line will have to do a better job protecting here on third down after that sack. Let's go! Brand 38! Here's Brissett. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first. But at least it's fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he's got Rodgers. And now a fumble. The ball's out. But I believe the Colts were able to fall on this when they were. And so possession will remain with Indy. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you probably talked about since training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. On first down, it's score. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. Ohio! Ohio! Another carry now for Gore. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Back-to-back -back stops make it third and ten.
Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. So that one will be accepted. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Brissett sets to throw it. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. It's not going anywhere. They're staying out there. They've converted once already on this drive. Here they go again on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is going to be incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. This is Rawls. A spin. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if he picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to – second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They stay on the ground, rolls again. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Wilson again to Rawls. A good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game, but 
These two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it? Or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice, got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughton. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.